everyone, welcome to Meeples Included. I am MaggieBot and this is my first strategy video. Uh, so in this series, I'm hoping to do some strategy and tactics advice and discussion around some of the games so that you can play them better. Uh, the first one I chose was a two-player abstract game that just came out, Onitama. Onitama is from Arcane Wonders and the Dice Towers Essential line. So the Dice Towers Essential line is where the Dice Tower is going through and finding games that they think should be either updated or brought to the states and they give them beautiful packaging and components and kind of their stamp of approval so they're doing a great job. Sheriff of Nottingham was really fun, Anitama was great, and Royals coming up is fantastic. So really really good job and I really hope this size box becomes standard because it was it's so perfect to put on shelves it's like amazing. Uh, so in this video we will be discussing a little bit about the rules and balance, a little bit about how to play the game, and a little bit of my personal advice of how to play well. Uh, I do play very well in Onitama so far, so I haven't really been crushed by anyone, but if you'd like to you can always join in the comments below to add to the discussion and add your own strategy advice. I welcome it and would love to hear from you. So there you go. Wish me luck everybody. <sighs> So the game itself is a two-player game in which you deal out five face-up cards, two in front of each player and one in the middle, and each turn you can move a piece and use one of the movement cards in front of you and you switch it with whatever's in the middle. So that way the next time your opponent plays, the card that they pick up is the one that you just got rid of. Um, it's a pretty interesting mechanic, you see all five cards the whole time, and the box itself comes with about 14 different ones so you kind of shuffle them up and every game is a little bit different. Uh, I could teach this to most any game player, but if they are new, like little ones, I would say uh, playing anywhere from that 7 to 9 year old range would be perfectly fine. just depends on how game minded they are. I am a huge believer in never underestimating kids. If your 5 year old is a chess whiz, teach them Onitama, no problem. It just depends on the kid and their temperament, really. This is a 15 minute game. so. If they could play something like chess or Carcassonne, they would be fine playing Onitama. What's great is that it's all face up, so your first few games are definitely going to be something you could coach someone through. So even someone new to games, you could probably take them through a couple of games before you started really playing. Um, the box itself says 14 and up, so I don't know, maybe that's about testing or something. The second point I'd like to make is that this game is a an abstract tactics game, so it does favor the person who plays the most tactics games. Um, if you are playing against a chess whiz, it is likely that they might crush you at this game, so there is something to be said about practice makes perfect. Um, if someone has studied a lot of tactics, they will do very well in this game, but you can combat that by playing a lot of this game and being good at knowing the cards. Um, in the game, the cards are very important because they give you all your possible movements within the game. I like to take a little bit of a note of which types of movement are present in my game this time. So there is forward movement, diagonals, there's sideways, and there's backwards. If any one of those things is underrepresented, um, like if there's only one forward movement card in, in all five, I like to overvalue that card a little bit. I like to get a hold of and control whatever is different because it's going to give me the most possibilities and take those possibilities away from my opponent. Forward movement on a 5x5 five five grid is really important because it tends to be a forward marching army all in a big chunk um, that having the ability to move forward is more important than anything else. So I like to look at the cards before we even start the game and try and pick out which one or two I would like to have in my back pocket. Um, that is where the strategy comes in in this game. Uh, strategy in general is kind of your overarching what would you like to do and how would you like to do it. But in games like this, you're mostly dealing with tactics. Tactics are reactions to news as it becomes available, right? So each turn, they've taken a movement and given you a different card. So you're going to have to rethink your plan a lot and react to what's going on on the board, not just follow through on your strategic plan, because that way you might not just run into their master and get killed. Those are terms you hear a lot in gaming, strategy, and tactics. Sometimes they're used interchangeably, and really there are big differences between them. This is a tactics-based game. There is a small amount of strategy, but you do need almost all tactics to do well. So, 
my first piece of advice to you, after you've counted your cards, start making a plan of keeping your pieces either in one big group or in little groups by themselves. You do not want a man stranded in this game. The board is so small that uh, if your opponent can pick off one of your pieces and you can't respond by taking one of theirs, you're going to be a huge disadvantage later in the game. There is a lot to be said in this game of just overwhelming by numbers. I think in one play of this I got two pieces up on someone and I just surrounded them basically in a little circle. You cannot deal with that. So losing pieces in this game is a big deal, but you want to be able to do it kind of equally. You want a push and pull. So stay together. My second piece of advice comes from learning a little bit, because I don't play, but I learned a little bit about chess, about uh, counting squares of influence. So looking out on the board and knowing which squares you can move into, so you control or threaten those pieces. If, if there is a piece there, you're threatening it just by being able to jump into that square. Um, there is a lot to be said about knowing which spaces they could move into their next turn and which spaces you're giving them by handing them the next card. So counting those squares and being kind of aware of self. <laughs> the last piece of advice I can give you for this particular game is to keep a threat back. If you have a particularly strong swingy piece or a piece that moves in a different way than any of the other pieces on the board, um, like Dragon is a pretty crazy card. It goes two over and one up and so things are flying across the board. Um, I would say hold this back so you make other people react to what you have. If you go through the whole game without ever playing your strongest card, I think you're playing the best you can be. Um, you only want to play your strongest cards if it means a kill for you in the next two turns, because you don't want them to have this. If I play Dragon, I don't want to have the game live long enough for me to have to deal with them having it. So I say hold your threats, make sure that you use them kind of in a bullying tactic, this is a bullying game, and um, hold those back and just keep those in, in, in your side and just keep using the kind of perfunctory movement cards and just hold that threat against them. It does also psychologically benefit you to have a stronger card and never play it. Um, there is something to be said about psychological effects of gaming. Um, you see a lot in Magic where players will play much quicker than you or they'll flick their cards at you like loudly or they'll speak or they'll ask you questions because it's all designed subconsciously or consciously to break up your mindset and to make you play worse. Um, so there is something to be said about keeping threats and bullying your other player. I hope this has been fun and helpful. I hope this will help you with your games of Onitama if you've never played. Uh, let me know down in the comments below if you have anything to add to the discussion or any particularly strong combos that you have played. Uh, I welcome discussion. I do not want to feel that anyone gets bullied or beat up on in the comments, so please be kind to others. And the last piece of this game that I will talk about is Tiger, where both in this version and the original version of Onitama, Tiger has been OP, overpowered, is bad, and I would recommend not using it in your games. Tiger is the only instance of two forward movement in the entire game. If I get dealt this on turn zero, I use that tactic a lot where I just hold it back and I make other people react to it. Um, it is not balance. <laughs> there is a huge threat on BGG about Tiger and Ostrich in the original and Tiger in the new version just causing the shortest, quickest, worst games. So I recommend you not use this at all. Just take it out. I will probably be burning mine. Uh, and that's all for me for now and I will see y'all next time. Bye!